for Facebook Live. My name is Jessie. We are gonna wait just a few seconds um, to give more people a chance to log on. Um, so just hang tight with us. We'll be with you in just a few seconds. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so again, my name is Jessie, and we are here today at the ARC. Now that's the Animal Outreach and Conservation Center. Um, this is a facility that's behind the scenes here at the Fort Worth Zoo, and it houses our outreach animal collection. And so I have one of our outreach animals here with us today. This is Thornton, and Thornton is a great horned owl. Now, great horned owls are one of the largest owl species that we find right here in the Fort Worth area. Um, they can be found throughout most of North America though. Um, so if you're tuning in from one of those locations, this is very well may be a species that you have near you. Now, most people who um, see these great horned owls in their yard are actually hearing them more than seeing them. We all grow up learning that owls say who, who, right? Well, most owls, don't actually hoot. Owls make a really large variety of sounds. However, this owl does make that really classic low hooting sound, which gives them the nickname the hoot owl. In fact, anytime you've seen an owl in a popular movie, most of the time, no matter what species of owl you're seeing on screen, the noise you're hearing most often is a great horned owl. Now, they get the name Great Horned Owl because of these feather tufts on top of their head. So they are not actually horns, um, they're just feathers, and they're called plumicorns, which means feathered horn. Now, he can raise them up and lower them down. And scientists believe the biggest reason for those plumicorns is for camouflage. So when he's hiding in a tree, he's going to be turned around facing the tree like this, He's gonna spread his wings out just a tiny bit so that all these nice colors on his feather are gonna blend in with the tree bark. And then he's gonna stick those plumicorns straight up in the air. Now that's gonna help break up his silhouette so it's not smooth. Um, and it also gives the illusion of ears. So if you're an animal looking up in the tree and you just see the shadow, that outline, you're gonna think, oh, well that's some kind of mammal, right? It'd almost look cat-like if he had those plumicorns sticking straight up. And out in the wild, anytime you can camouflage what you really are, it is only safer for you. Now, I mentioned that these are owls that we can find right here in Texas. Um, so if you were sitting outside on your front porch at night and you heard the sound whoosh of a bird flying overhead, that would not be an owl because owls don't make any sound at all when they're flying. It's completely silent. And the reason for that is because of their feathers. Um, so we have some feathers of Thornton's here for you to see up close. Um, so these two on the left are Thornton's feathers and you can see they look really soft and plushy, kind of velvety. And the edges of them are frayed. It's not a smooth edge. Um, and that fray, that ridge is just enough to break through the wind current and muffle the sound of his flight. Now, next to Thornton's feathers, we have a very different one. That blue feather did not come from an owl. That's a macaw feather. And that one's really different. So you can see that the edge on that one is really slick and smooth. And that feather feels more thick and hard, almost plasticky in feeling. Now, when parrots fly, in contrast, it's very, very loud. You can hear every wing beat that a parrot makes. Now, the reason for that difference is because of what they eat, right? Owls are hunters, they're carnivores, so they have to be quiet to sneak up on their prey. Whereas parrots are eating things like fruits and nuts and seeds, so they don't have to sneak up their prey because we like to say a banana isn't going to split. So they don't have to be quiet when they are flying. Now, let's talk a little bit about that hunting. Oh, Thornton saw something over there. We'll give him a second to settle back down. You all right there, buddy? Let me give you some more space to settle down there. There we go. Looked like he lost his footing there for a second. All right, so we'll talk about that um, hunting now. Now, when owls are hunting, they are gonna be using a combination of their sight and their hearing. Now, both of those senses are super, super strong on owls. Uh, let's talk about their eyesight first. 
Now, usually an owl's large eyes is the first thing people notice. People see those big eyes and right away know that's an owl. Um, and they are huge. If our eyes were the equivalent size of an owl's, it would be like we had two grapefruits in our skulls. Now, their eyes are so big, they take up so much room in their skull that there's not a whole lot of room left in there for other things, like eyeball muscles. Now, what I mean by that is that you and I can keep our heads still and we can just move our eyes left and right and up and down to look around us, and an owl can't do that. There's no room for muscles in there. Their eyes are fixed in place. They're just held in by bone. And so that's why they have to turn their heads in order to look around. So if you wanna know what that feels like, you can put on owl goggles. So put your uh, fingers up around your eyes and then you'll know what it feels like because suddenly your vision's blocked. You have to move your head. Now, we can't turn our heads around as far as an owl can. And we get asked a lot, can they turn their heads all the way around? Now, they can't turn them all the way around like we see in cartoons um, because eventually they would pinch themselves and wouldn't be able to breathe, right? But they can turn about 270 degrees. So we like to say that's like looking over your left shoulder by turning your head to the right. Um, so it still is a really far rotation. Now the way they're able to do that is because of the number of bones in their neck. So you and I and most other animals have seven bones in our neck, seven neck vertebrates. In fact, even giraffe only have seven bones in their neck. They're just really big bones. But an owl, depending on the species, can have 12 to 14 bones in their neck. So more neck bones means more flexibility to allow for that head rotation to turn so far around. Now, their eyes are also shaped a little differently than ours. So we have eyeballs, right? Our eyes are circular shaped. Um, an owl's eye is almost sort of mushroom or tube shape. So it is rounded on the front edge and then it goes back like a tube. And that's gonna allow them to have really good binocular vision. They can see really far away. And you can also see, you might notice Thornton's uh, pupils kind of shrinking and growing as his eyes adjust to different light here in this room. Um, so that's extra noticeable on an owl because those eyes are so large. Now, a lot of people have heard that owls can see in the dark. They can't see in complete darkness. However, just enough light from the moon and the stars is enough to allow an owl to see just as well as you and I see in full daylight. So they just need a tiny bit of light to be able to see and to be able to hunt. But let's say it's a really dark night and it's cloudy, so you can't see the moon and stars um, and they've got nothing to guide them. Well, then they're gonna rely on their hearing. So owls have excellent, excellent hearing. You can't see Thornton's ears. They are hidden beneath his feathers um, and they just have internal ears. So you and I, we have this floppy part on the outside of our ear, that's called a pinna, and birds don't have pinna. So their ears just look like holes in the sides of their head. Now, owl's ears are actually lopsided. Most species of owl have lopsided ears. So he's got one ear way up high and one ear way down low. Now, having those ears in an offset position allows him to locate things based on sounds. So if a tiny little mouse were making a noise over here, that sound wave is gonna come at Thornton, hit those feathers around his face, and those feathers direct the sound right at his ears. From there, he can tell if the sound hit his right ear or his left ear first. And then he's gonna know if the noise came from his right or his left or above him or below him. And he's able to kind of create a 3D sound map in order to find what he's looking for. Now you may have seen owls, he might demonstrate for us right now, uh, keep their bodies still and kind of move their heads around like this. And that's called triangulation. So what they're doing is listening in. So they're honing in on those sounds to pinpoint exactly where they're coming from. Now, to give you a good idea of how good an owl's hearing is, if you imagine a football field in your head, we could place a tiny little mouse on one end of a football field and then release Thornton all the way in the other end zone. And he would be able to find and catch that mouse using his hearing alone. Now, when he does come onto that mouse, he is going to grab it up using these sharp talons on his feet. Now that's their primary weapon. 
And talons is just the special word for these big nails that he has. Um, anytime they're on a bird of prey, we call them talons. Now, I have to wear this thick leather glove to protect my hand from Thornton's talons. Um, but not only are they sharp, they also have a really, really good grip strength. So, if you guys at home want to um, try something with me, I want you all to make a big, strong fist. Squeeze your hand tight, and then relax your hand, open it. And now one more time, make a big, strong fist, and then relax your hand and open it. And you'll notice that for us, it's easier for us to have our hands open, right? We have to think about it and use our brain and our muscles to close our fingers. Well, for an owl, it's actually the opposite. So their natural body position is to have that foot clenched tight. And they have to think about it and use their brains and their muscles in order to open up and release that grip. So that's really useful because they are hunting live prey, right? So they wanna be able to grab it and not let it go but also because owls typically perch up in trees. And that's where they like to sleep. So if you and I tried to take a nap in a tree, if we held on to a branch, as soon as we fell asleep, our hands would open and we'd fall out of the tree. Well, that wouldn't do any good for the owls, right? So they need to be able to grip on even when they're not thinking about it, even when they are sleeping. Now, earlier we mentioned that this type of owl makes a hooting sound, right? Um, but you guys didn't hear him do that. You heard him being vocal um, a few minutes ago and he was making more of a high-pitched chirping or like a meeping kind of sound. Um, and there's a very interesting reason why Thornton makes that sound. So that meeping noise or that chirping noise um, is actually more typical of juvenile owls. Thornton is not a juvenile owl. Thornton is 17 years old. He is full grown. However, he came into human care when he was very, very young. So Thornton here was actually a rehabbed bird. He was hatched out in the wild. Um, someone found him as a very young chick, took him into their home and tried to make him a pet. Well, they were feeding him pieces of hot dog, which is not a healthy diet for an owl. He got very, very sick and that person dropped him off at the zoo. Now, thankfully our veterinary team was able to uh, save him. You can see he's very healthy and thriving now. Um, however, he was not able to be released back into the wild. He was already too reliant on humans, and that's how Thornton came to live with us. So because he has been living here with humans since he was very young, he kind of held on to that juvenile vocalization that you may have heard earlier. Well, now I think we may have gotten some questions um, from our viewers, so I'm going to turn it over to you guys. We would love to hear them. If you have any uh, questions, make sure you send them in. I would love to answer them for you. How far can owls see? That's a great question. I don't know the exact distance that they can see, but very far away. Again, we like to use an example of the football field. Not only can Thornton hear that mouse um, all the way on the other end of the football field, he would be able to see it as well if the lighting was in the right condition. How big do owls get? So the largest owl in the world uh, I'm sorry, the largest owl in North America is the great gray owl, and they can get between six and eight pounds. Thornton here is just under three pounds. How high do they fly? So they don't really have a reason to fly quite as high as other birds, things like falcons and stuff. They prefer to fly lower because their prey is on the ground. Um, so they wanna stay at about tree level most of the time. And what are owl pellets? That's a great question. So owls eat their prey whole um, and they eat everything. They eat the whole part of it. Um, and then they cough up what we call an owl pellet, which is made of the undigestible parts. So we actually have some here, if we can um, show you guys. Um, and those owl pellets are made up of fur and bones, any parts that the owl can't digest. Now, typically, they cough up about one of those per day. Now, owl pellets are really neat. They're great for wildlife biologists because they can go out in nature. They can find um, those owl pellets and dissect them and see what the owls in the area have been eating. Now, that's really useful information um, for the health of that particular wild area. For instance, if the prey animals if there's a lot of prey animals found in those pellets, then that means there's enough to support the carnivores that live in that area. So it just gives you a really nice idea on the, uh, the health of that wild area. 
How fast can they fly? Oh, that's a question I don't know. Owls are not known for their speed, though, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and how far can they turn their heads around? They can turn their heads about 270 degrees. So that would be like if Thornton were to turn his head around, he could turn to about this side if he was facing forward. <laughs> and how, why is it called a great horned owl? He's called a great horned owl because of these feather tufts on his head that look like horns. Now they're not actually horns, they're only feathers, and they're called plumicorns, which means feathered horn. And do owls sleep during the day? They do. So owls sleep during the day and at night. I know that's a little confusing because we all know owls are nocturnal, and that's true, but nocturnal doesn't mean exactly what we all have grown up thinking it does. So animals who are nocturnal typically are not going to sleep all day and be awake all night. Because if you think about it, if an animal is sleeping for a long stretch of time, like eight hours at a time like we do or like we wish we did, um, that's just asking for a predator to come find you, right? So owls typically are gonna take short naps all throughout the day and night. So they may be asleep for an hour or so and then be awake for an hour or so, check out their surroundings and then go back to sleep again. And they're gonna do that all throughout the day and night. Now what nocturnal does mean is that they're gonna do most of their hunting or eating at night. And that is true of our owls here as well. Is he wise? That is a really good question. So we have all heard the wise old owl. Well, if you remember me talking about how their um, large eyes mean there's not a whole lot of room in their skull for other things, that includes a brain. So owl's brains are very, very tiny. Now, animal intelligence is something that's really hard to measure. So owls are not good at problem solving, um, but they're very instinctual. So they have all the great instincts they need to hunt and to survive and to thrive, um, but they're not gonna be problem solving animals. Um, so we like to say a more appropriate uh, animal would have been like, the wise old crow or the wise old vulture, um, but no one wants to see a vulture in a graduation cap. Uh, I like to think that owls had a better publicity team, mm -hmm. so they got the job. And what does he eat? So here at the zoo, Thornton eats mice, um, and out in the wild, they're gonna eat a variety of things, so they can eat, of course, mice and rats, small frogs and lizards, and actually great horned owls are one of the only natural predators of skunks. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, one of which is that they're one of the only owls in this area that are large enough to hunt a skunk. Um, but the other reason is that they can't smell skunk spray. So owls have an underdeveloped sense of smell. Um, there's some debate in the scientific community whether they have any sense of smell at all. But we have proven that they don't have the sensory receptors to pick up the smell of skunk spray specifically. So they don't have to worry about that stinky spray and that makes them a great natural predator for those animals. And do they hibernate in the winter? They do not hibernate in the winter. That's a great question. Um, they are gonna be uh, kind of at a very equal level of activity all throughout the year. What's his wingspan? He's showing it off for you. <laughs> <laughs> his wingspan is uh, about four and a half feet. <laughs> And are they found here in North Texas? They are. We can find great horned owls um, right here in Fort Worth. In fact, I've seen them in my apartment complex. So you don't even have to be out in really wild wooded areas in order to see them. Would they go after pets in our yards? That's a question we get a lot. So it depends on A, where you live, if there's owls in that area, if there's great horned owls in that area, and how large your pet is. So. An owl of about this size can hunt something up to about five pounds, maybe six pounds. Um, so if your pet is smaller than that, then it is possible. Now I will say that an owl is gonna go after an easy target. So if you're in an area where there is plenty of wildlife, things like mice and rats and frogs and lizards, those are probably easier to catch than your dog or cat. Um, and so it's not a likely scenario. And do they have any predators in the wild? Not very many. So the majority of predation on owls is gonna happen either as eggs or when they're freshly hatched chicks. Now, once the owls are old enough to start flying on their own, 
they become really hard for predators to catch. Um, so they don't have very many predators once they reach full sized. And why are their brains so small? <laughs> So it's just a matter of anatomy. Um, an owl's skeleton is really tiny. I know Thornton looks like a big owl, but he is all feather. His skeleton is so small inside. Um, and their skeletons are very, very light. So they're kind of um, honeycombed in texture. They're not solid bones like we have. Um, and that, of course, makes them very light for flying. And in fact, if you were to take all of Thornton's feathers and his skeletal system and weigh them separately, the feathers would weigh more because that's how many of them they are. So that combination of that teeny tiny skeleton already, teeny tiny skull, giant eyes in there taking up all that room, there's just not enough space for a big brain. Do they build nests? They do not build their own nests. So these owls are famous for taking nests that they just find out in the wild. They find a nest that's been abandoned. Typically, it's uh, from a larger bird like a hawk. Um, these guys often take red-tailed hawk uh, nests and they'll go ahead and use those as their own. Now, the hawks aren't affected because they have different nesting seasons, um, so they just kind of take turns. I, can you explain again about an owl's ears and how they're lopsided? Yeah, absolutely. So his ears are hidden under his feathers. Um, and they're offset from each other. So we have one of them is about here on Thornton, and on his other side, it's down lower, um, nearer his chin. Um, so they're offset. And this is a feature that uh, most owl species have, though not all, um, and some more dramatically offset than others. And that offset ears is gonna allow him to be able to tell which sound hit his ears first, so, or which ear was hit first by the sound. Um, and so he can tell the direction of things based on that, based on knowing if the sound hit this ear first or if it hit this ear first. How long are their legs? Oh, they have much longer legs than it looks like. Um, so Thornton's legs actually come about up to here. Um, now I'm not going to push his fluff up for you because he would not appreciate that. Um, but they are very long. They go up to about here. And all of this is just fluffy feathers covering the tops of his legs. How many eggs do they normally lay and what do they look like? So they can lay up to five eggs at a time, but it's more typical to find two to three at a time. And they're about this big um, and they're kind of an off-white color. And last question, do owls blink? Owls do blink. Um, they don't blink together in unison like we usually do. A lot of times they blink one eye and then the other one. Um, and they actually have a third eyelid. So you and I, we have our top and bottoms eyelids, but Thornton has a third eyelid that goes side to side. It's called a nictitating membrane, and it's a clear eyelid. So that allows him to blink and still be able to keep his eye on a prey item that he might be watching, um, or be able to watch where he's going when he's flying. Well, thank you guys so much for asking all of your wonderful questions about Thornton. Um, we do have an activity for you guys to play at home. Um, we have a couple games for you to play for those of you who are quarantined together at home um, based on your hearing. So the first game is Marco Polo. Many of you have probably played this. Um, I know I grew up playing it in a swimming pool, but doing it in your living room or in your backyard is a really nice variation. So the player who is it is going to close their eyes and you can only communicate with the person you're tagging based on hearing. So you're going to use um, a, some kind of code word. So for instance, uh, I could say Marco and you would say Polo, but don't limit yourself to just that. You could say peanut butter and jelly or vanilla and chocolate, whatever words appeal to you. Um, and you wanna try to chase each other and try to find each other based on just those words, based on the things you're hearing, just like an owl would. Now we also have a second variation of the game. This is called the predator and prey game. Now the way you play that is the person who is being the prey has to stand with their back facing the predator. So they're looking forward. And the person who's being the predator has to sneak up behind you as quietly as they can. Now their goal is to sneak up behind you and touch you on the shoulder without you noticing they're coming. But if you think you hear them, you have to turn around. And when you turn around, the predator has to freeze until you turn back around and continue the game. So the idea is that they get to you and tap you on the shoulder before you notice. 
So these are both games having to do with using your hearing um, to see if you can hear as good as Thornton here. Well, again, thank you guys so much for joining us on our Facebook Live here at the Fort Worth Zoo. Thornton and I are going to say, I will see you later.